trapped in how you feel and ultimately what you truly feel about yourself deep down is what you are manifesting. So that may be your, if your current situation is not what you want, you're probably in his opinion, stuck in a place of trauma where you, what you feel about yourself may not be even what you project to the world. So I don't know any thoughts on that, Dr. G. Yeah. I want to just speak on why we get trapped and what's trapping us, right? One aspect of that. And one aspect of why we get trapped and what's trapping is because we become addicted to the neurochemical response of the trauma bonding, right? So the trauma bonding produces a neurochemical response, cortisol, adrenaline, right? Anger, excitation, right? And oftentimes we can become addicted to that somatic experience. So much so that when we're not experiencing it, we imagine it so that we can get that fix, that, that, that fix in our body, right? And this is one of the things that traps us. And this is why you see some people that consistently engage in drama because of the neurochemical response in the body and they need that response, right? Even though it can be counterproductive, it is something, it's something other than feeling numb. Right. And so just one aspect of why we get trapped is because of the somatic experience that it creates. Wow, that's deep. Doc. Doc. All right, um, Dennis, I'm going to have you just Dennis still on here. Did we lose Dennis? Oh, I see him. Yeah, I'm here. I'm okay, here. I'm, I'm tripping. I just got when people join in and moves the box. Okay, I see you. I had a, I had a question real quick. Oh, yeah, please ask. Um, so while he's doing that, is there like a NPL vocabulary worksheet we can get for this neuroplasticity vocabulary? <clears throat> You're, You're muted. Mute. You're muted. Yes, yeah, that's a good question. That, that's that's a great question, and maybe I need to put that together. But I will tell you what the vocabulary is because it's a part of my practice on a daily basis, right? So what I've done when I work with my clients, I coach them in creating a superlative vocabulary, right? So like you are phenomenal, powerful, radiant, regal, royal, extraordinary, phenomenal, um, unstoppable, unbreakable, right? To be able to have a vocabulary that's superlative, and delete the vocabulary that keeps you in the toxins, right? And so throughout my day, several times of the day, this is a part of what I'm saying to myself. It's how I start my practice, my meditation in the morning, right? I'm incredible, remarkable, powerful, unstoppable, resistant, defiant, right? And I can go on for several minutes in a superlative rant that affects my neurochemistry, right? What I'm seeking to do is to create a neurochemical response that produces dopamine, serotonin in my body, right? And I get, hit on, I get hooked on that superlative conversation that's not rooted in the ego. Again, it's evidence-based, right? And so sometimes when I work with my clients, it's like, let's take a look at the evidence. And when we stop and pause for a moment, it's like, wow, you've created a company, you've overcome this obstacle, you've done this, you've done that, you've done this, you hear about, it. it's like, wow, yeah, you know, you're right. All right? So we're, we're not making this stuff up. It's evidence-based. And we need to tap into that in a superlative way and to be careful and mindful of the absolutes, which is the language of the ego. You must, you always, you never, you have to, right? This takes the choice away, our power away. You know what? I have to do such and such. No, I choose to do something. I want to do something because I have the power to do it, right? So we have to be very mindful of the, the language of the ego, which operates in absolutes. Mm 